Welcome to this week's Canyon Youth Bite Size PD. Assessing your assessments, part one, connecting assessments to the standards. As with everything, um, professional development that we do, we ask that you take care of yourself, but also for this particular professional development, we ask that you are reflective about the assessments that you already have. And think about what are some ways that, are that we're gonna be talking about today that you can improve them. As with everything we do in Canyon School District, it is all tied back to our multi-tiered system of support framework. And this week's PD falls under student performance data. Because if we don't have good data, then we're not gonna be able to make good instructional decisions. And good data comes from good assessments. So we'll be talking about what are some ways that we can write effective assessments. Today's learning intention is you are learning how various learning targets from the standards connect to the different assessment question types. You're learning this because different types of learning targets require different modes of assessment. You'll know you've learned this when you're able to determine what types of questions you should have on your assessments based on the types of learning targets from the standards you are assessing. Quite a mouthful. So it's just basically looking at your standards and being able to match the right type of question to it. Is it a multiple choice, open-ended, performance assessment? We'll be talking about that today. So we'll be talking briefly about what makes a high quality assessment, what are various learning targets from the standards, and then the different assessment item types. And then lastly, thinking about what are some things to keep in mind as you are writing your assessments or refining them each year? These are just the resources that I pulled that I used for today's information, just so you, if you want future reference, um, these are the two books that we use for today. All of the assessments that we give are part of an assessment system that we have in Canyon School District, and they are all tied together and should be reflective of each other. So for example, the assessments that you give in your classroom should be reflective of the district assessments, which should be reflective of the state assessments. The primary purpose of assessments is to inform your teaching so that you can help students improve their learning. If this isn't the goal of your assessment, then you may want to rethink, why are you giving this assessment? Is it just because you're at the end of the unit? So what makes a high quality assessment? There's some things that you should be thinking about, mostly who, what, when, where, why, and how. When are you assessing students? Are they ready to be assessed? How do you know that they are ready? Pay attention to these three questions. Why are you assessing students? Again, going back to the previous slide of, are you using it to inform your teaching so you can improve student learning? What are you assessing? Do your assessments match what the students have been practicing? Assessments are not a time to trick students and see how we can catch them to see if they've been listening. And where we'll be spending most of our time today is how are you going to be assessing that? So how are you going to assess what they've learned? But before we can decide what types of questions we're going to use, we need to decide what our learning targets are. And the learning targets come from the standards. So there's several different types of learning targets that can come from your standards. The knowledge target, which represents factual information, procedural knowledge, and conceptual understanding. Reasoning, that's uh, their logical reasoning, inference, analysis, comparison, classification. The skill, they're demonstrating a physical skill-based performance. And then creation of a target is a product. Uh, creation of a product goes under the product target. So are they actually producing something that they can physically hand to you? So these are the different types of learning targets that can come from each standard. So look over this table and think about the categories that your standards fall into. For some types of classes, they may fall into one major category, such as our performing arts may only fall into one category with one or two skills falling in the knowledge or reasoning targets. 
for some of our core classes, most of our standards are going to fall in the knowledge and reasoning target with every once in a while having the student produce a target, a, a product. So for example, here's a high school math standard. And ba basically the standard says that students are going to use graphs, equations, and uh, tables to compare exponential, linear, and quadratic equations. They're not solving anything. Solve is not in the standard. It's just comparing and observing that an exponential graph increases faster than the other two graphs. So this is a reasoning target. This standard has a reasoning target because students are making observations and then making conclusions based on those observations. And then they're making comparisons based on and then coming up with conclusions based on those comparisons. So this isn't a knowledge target because nowhere in there does it say solve. That's in a different standard. This is just making observations, comparisons, and conclusions. So this is a reasoning target for this standard. So now I want you to pick one standard from that you're going to be assessing soon, or maybe that you've just assessed, and decide where does it fit? Is it a knowledge target, a reasoning target, a skill target, or a product target? Now that you've fixed, picked your target, we're going to look at the different the best appropriate ways to assess that target and that standard. So the different types of question items that we have are selected response, which are multiple choice, true, false, short answer. Short answer is fill in the blank and then matching. We have extended written ex response, which is like your essay questions, or it could be you know longer than the short answer, so two to three sentences or constructed response. We have the performance assessment, which is students engage in a specific activity that requires them to apply a performance skill or to create a product. And then we have personal communication. And that's usually one-on-one -on -one interviews, class discussions, oral exams, student journals, different things like that. So these are the different types of items that you can use on your assessment. Most assessments will have a combination of these. Um, depending on your subject area, you may just have a performance assessment, such as in the performing arts. So now that we've looked at the different types of the different types of targets, we've looked at the different item types, let's match up the appropriate item type with the appropriate target. So if you're assessing a procedural knowledge, such as recalling which general was at the Battle of Bull Run, or identifying the parts of speech in a sentence, solving a set of five math problems, or balancing a chemistry equation, then selected response, constructed response, and personal communication are the best ways to assess these types of learning targets. They are also a good way to assess students if you're asking them to justify their answers or to predict and justify what is going to happen, or to talk about the effect that a certain event has on a society today. If you're looking for students to demonstrate a particular skill, such as folding in ingredients when making a recipe, or different musical techniques, such as slurring notes or vibrato, or a specific type of cut with the table saw, then a performance assessment is best. A performance assessment would also be best if the learning target is asking for students to produce a target such as an actual table or an item of food or clothing. Like I mentioned before, most assessments you create will have lots of different item types and some will only have one type of question or prompt. It all depends on the standard you are assessing students on. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that you've matched the item types with your standard, there's some other things to think about as well when creating your assessment. Instructional Supports has created an assessment checklist that you can use to assess your assessments. I'll link this in the Canyons U Canvas course and it's also linked in this PowerPoint. Some of the things to note on this checklist 
that we sometimes forget when we're creating our assessments is starting with the easier items. Do we start right off with uh, some problems or some questions that students can be successful with, or we just dive right into that complex problem? By starting with the easier items, students can have that feeling of success, and then they're more likely to complete the assessment and give it their all. Do you order the items in the order they were taught within the unit? That might help some students visualize where their notes, where their notes are within their notebook so that they can recall that information. And again, assessment should match the practice. Something that always stood out to me when creating assessments in a class I took was they gave an example of learning the capitals of the 50 states. So let's say you're asking students to learn the capitals of the 50 states and they did it by handing you a map and you had to label the state and then the capital of that state. And that's how you practiced and that's how you learned. Imagine how you would feel if come the day of the test, you were just given a blank piece of paper and asked to list all the 50 states in alphabetical order and their capitals. That's not how you learn them. That's not how you practice. That's not how you visualize them in your mind. You visualize them with a map. So the assessment should match the practice. So the challenge we'd like to issue with you with this Bite Size PD is to use the item type guidelines in this, um, in this presentation along with the CSD assessment checklist with an assessment you've already created to make sure that it is a high quality assessment. If you can check off all the items and you feel pretty good about it, excellent. If not, then what are some changes that you can make to improve this assessment so that you will get better data from your students so that you can improve their learning? That is all for today. If you have any questions, you can email me. I'm Allison Duncan. Also, here are the, some important links to all the different um, the Canyon U and the Bite Size PD page, which has the course, the schedule of all the different courses for the Bite Size PD. Thanks for joining us today, and we will see you next time.